Joshua Pau and today in Tax Stewart Talks we are talking to Thomas de Gent from Waldo Sudal about the Tour de France. It's Thursday the 11th of July, uh, the Tour de France is in full swing and on the line from France, Thomas de Gent from Lotto Sudal, the man who is on a mission to finish all three Grand Tours this year. Thomas, welcome, thanks for coming on the podcast. Um, how are you feeling? How are the sensations after the first couple of days in the Tour? Well, they are actually really, really good for the moment. Yesterday was the first uh, hardest finish, uh, but uh, I... I just finished in a, in a group at uh, eight minutes, so I took it uh, a bit more easy for the upcoming days. Today will be already a really hard day, so you have to save your strength as much as possible. And uh, yeah, the following days are uh, a bit harder. And Caleb has a few sprint days left, so it's uh, it's better to save your strength. For the people who saw the opening of yesterday's stage, might think that you weren't really saving your strength. You really put a really decent effort in to get into that breakaway. Is it frustrating to then see the next breakaway stick? Yeah, but it's uh, it's always like this. Uh, they they try to aim uh, for for my wheel, and we had two times a, a nice group to to get away. But education first also wanted to be in, and uh, they closed the gap two times. But the other two or three attacks, they were covered by Tim. So we always had somebody in. And uh, I, I wanted to be in the breakaway, but it, I didn't succeed, and uh, Tim did. So that was uh, also good for the team because he has the polka dot jersey, and now he took some extra points. And uh, he is uh, in the polka dot jersey for one extra day. So actually, yesterday was better for him than, than for me, but... Yeah, it's frustrating that uh, that I couldn't get in the, the breakaway yet. I tried two days already, and uh, yeah, I couldn't get away. So hopefully, I have more luck in the in the next days. Is uh, could today then maybe be on the radar? Because I've heard you did a record of the of this stage already before the Tour de France, and it was on your radar. But you may had second thoughts about it being too tough. What's your fault now? Yeah, the, the the stage itself will be okay for me. It's uh, within my capabilities, but La Plage de Belfi is too hard for me. So I could get in the break, but I probably probably won't go for the for the for the win. There will always be somebody lighter than me in the breakaway, or a better climber. And um, yeah, maybe I'll try to be in the break, but it won't be for uh, for the victory probably. But I had to do a long training in the mountains, and uh, it was really easy for me to follow this route because it it was already on the ISO side, and that made it easier to make a route in the in the in the Vogesen, and uh, that's why I took this one. Not not really because I wanted to try and uh, win this one, but it was just nice to see it already beforehand. And maybe if it won't be for the stage win then today, then maybe you could rack up some points for the King of the Mountains classification. So keep the keep that polka dot jersey in the hotel room. That would be nice, but it's not really a big goal. But if I'm if I'm in today, then I will try to take the points. Uh, if if that means that uh, I can take it to this evening, that would be nice. But it would also mean that I take away points for uh, from from riders who are maybe contenders. Uh, of Tim and uh, Tim now has I think 17 points so it's already a nice extra and if he can divide the points today a little bit then uh, I hope uh, for me it would be nice to have it but I hope Tim still has it in the, this evening and as I mentioned in the intro um, you're going for the all three Grand Tours and I heard you mention that you'd like to get one stage win uh, at least in one of those three Grand Tours um, and you talked a little bit, I think it was with Adam Blight on this podcast, about the pressure that could be there for the team and for sponsors to get a stage win. Do you, do you feel that pressure as well? It's not like that the sponsors give the pressure, but you just feel the pressure from, from, from everybody because it's now uh, Tour de France is the biggest race and uh, you, you can just feel the pressure uh, coming from the, the, the press, from the spectators. Also a little bit from the team, but they don't tell us today we have to win, you have to win today. That's, that's not what they say. We make a plan every day and we try to stick to the plan. And 
Uh, if it's for Caleb, then we try to get Caleb into the best position for the sprint. If it's a breakaway, then we try to get as much guys in the breakaway to try and win from there. But uh, I, I never received a phone call from uh, <laughs> from a sponsor who said today you have to win or you get fired. So it's <laughs> it's not like this. Okay. Uh, uh, talking about Caleb, uh, did you give the, the little pocket rocket a, a well birthday message already? Um, we were waiting for him at the breakfast table and he, he didn't arrive yet. So I think he has a, a long sleep for his uh, birthday as a birthday present. So uh, I will see him in the bus and then uh, we will sing him a song. Uh, okay. Um, can you talk us through like how it is like this race morning for a stage like this? Um, you guys, you, yeah, you go for, you have a, maybe a bit of a sleep in, go for breakfast, etc. Can you talk us through that race morning? Well, it depends on how the, the, the how long the stage is. Uh, today is a short stage, so we could sleep a bit longer. Uh, this uh, breakfast from 8 to 10, so you can choose when you go for breakfast. The, the, our chef is there uh, at the table waiting for us, uh, asking us if we have to, uh, if we need uh, omelette um, or maybe muesli, and he will make it for us. Then we have uh, our uh, suitcase has to be ready at the door at 10 o'clock. The Swanyos pick it up. 10.45, we leave with the bus to the start. It's not a really long drive, but we always like to be there well in time to do an, uh, a meeting that's in the bus already. Uh, to do the interviews at the bus, that's always two or three journalists that, that, that are standing there waiting for us. Um, and after that, yeah, you get dressed, you go sign in, you go to the start line and you wait until uh, you can start. And I think the start is at 13.05, so it's still a long time, but it takes up your whole day to just get ready uh, to just uh, do the meetings and the, and the interviews. And after the stage, you get showered as quickly as possible go back in the with the bus to the hotel you eat something in the bus when you are uh, on the way I mean you get to the hotel you have the massage for most of the riders or you get a uh, treatment from the osteopath and then it's dinner sleepy time again so that's that's, that's the same thing almost every day it's uh, really structured everything has to be on time everybody needs to uh, be respectful on the times that, that the sport directive gives and yeah, it, it gets boring after four or five days, but that's how you get through the, the tour. And the only thing where you have a, a little bit of freedom is in the race itself. So you gladly always take that freedom as much as possible in, and get into a breakaway and entertain yourself during the days. Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. The, the only freedom we have where we can go wherever we want to go is uh, in the in the. <laughs> Uh, one of the things, because you mentioned it, that uh, after the stage, a lot of riders getting a massage. So you, you might know where I'm going to. Uh, the famous Greg Henderson tweets from a couple of years ago that Thomas de Gent never gets a massage, ever. Yeah, Is it true. still true? It's still true. The, the last massage I had was in uh, the Tour de France of 2017. I had uh, two massages there. And before that, it was uh, already, uh, I think, from the Vuelta 2016, and yeah, I, I just don't like massages, and I, I like to get them as, as less as possible. And so now it's uh, since 2017, I, I haven't had a massage yet, and uh, I like it this way. My legs are used to used to this. Uh, I like the tension on the legs after the race, and I like to keep that tension for the whole race. And after three days, uh, when I'm at home, after three days. The tension is gone, so I think my legs adapt to the no massage rule. Uh, one of the other tweets was there was no warm up before a time trial either. Yeah, that's also still true. <laughs> okay, and I know one thing that has changed. It is about the M and M's. I've heard no longer M and M's for you during the Tour de France. No, I I had uh, a lot of M and M's last year. I think I had four kilos of M and M's. I wasn't planning to to eat them all. But sometimes when you are in the room and you want something to snack, then you eat something that is like uh, comfort food. And uh, I don't always want to eat uh, yogurt with muesli. 
in the evening or some fruits. I, I like to have uh, like not much, but like 10, 15 M and M's. Uh, and I did this every evening before, but then my teammates started to to know. Uh, uh, they they knew I had bags of M and M's. So in the last week, I was handing out bags of M and M's to teammates and uh, said, "Okay, <laughs> from from." From the next time, I don't bring the M&Ms anymore, and I just uh, eat the normal things. Not that M&Ms are bad, but it's maybe be- better to uh, to just leave them at home. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's have a quick talk about like the breakaways, because a lot of people obviously want to know when you go into the breakaway, what are your tactics? And a lot of people are actually interested in what is the power. So could you give like an indication for me yesterday when you tried to get into that breakaway, what the power was? Um, yeah, the 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 first breakaway was right after the the flag dropped because sometimes the break goes right after the flag, so I always have to try to be in the first one. We had a nice group and we were pushing. Uh, when you do the turn, I pushed five hundred twenty, five hundred fifty, and the wheels it's like three fifty, and you try to make good speed. Uh, I try to motivate the others, but then when they close the gap. Obviously, you have to wait for a few minutes to go again because <laughs> I'm Superman, I cannot go all the time. So then it's really helpful if you have a teammate who uh, who does the other attacks. So that, then there is always somebody in. Then I waited until the small climb after 10 kilometers was a, a small climb. And I had to move up on the climb. And when I got to the front, I just attacked immediately again. And I had two other guys with me. And at that point, I pushed uh, like 490 watts for five minutes to to get away, to make a gap. And um, yeah, but it wasn't not enough because they, they catched us back. Education first really wanted somebody in. But you, sometimes you only have to jump once and you are uh, gone. And it's also possible that uh, you have to attack 10, 15 times almost. And it takes maybe 100 kilometers to get away. It depends on the stage and how many riders are uh, interested in the stage, and then then it can take a really long time. But that's that's why I like to uh, to do it like this. It's always uh, a different scenario, and it's it's really nice to see. Even even in the in the race itself, it's nice to see when it's on TV. People will love uh, to see the the, the first hour and uh, these mountain stages where there is the most fight actually in the in the whole race. Those are the, the nicest things to things to watch. And is it for you then even more enjoyable if you have to try several times and then it sticks, or would you are you just as happy when you get away in the first attempt? The easiest the easiest way is to get it in the first attempt, but it's uh, uh, when it's a, a fight for seventy kilometers and then you get away, then you also have a lot of sat- satisfaction out of this because you you tried a lot of times and. You could manage to, uh, to 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 find the right spot to attack or uh, the right moment to attack, and that's why you got away. So I, I also have a lot of uh, uh, satisfaction of uh, of an attack after 70 kilometers. But the most satisfaction I have is when the brake sticks to the finish and uh, we we can race for the victory. That's uh, that's the best feeling of all because that means that my my tactic was the was a good one at that day. If I could ask you to name a dream breakaway, say it's you and three other riders, um, who would you pick to be in the breakaway with? Obviously, pr- probably people you want to work with, but also want to be able to beat. Who would you pick? Um, the Marquis would be in because he is uh, strong and always works, but I'm a little bit faster than him. Um, I would have said Pantano for the same reason, but he is... Uh, yeah, he doesn't race anymore because he's caught with doping. Um, but yeah, riders like uh, the Marquis, the, he he is somebody who always gives his uh, his best. He gives his all, and I'm just slightly faster than him in the sprint. But uh, I actually hope to to not sprint for victory. I try to drop them before, so I have a bit more security. And um, I would like to have a breakaway. If I can choose any rider, I would like to have a breakaway with Eddie Merckx and uh, Jens Voigt and Jacques Durand, just to know the feeling uh, what they uh, what they have done when uh, when they were in a break. Uh, that would would have been nice, but 
that's of, of course not possible. It's a really good answer there. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up, uh, but not before I ask you the Tux Turbo Talk fan question of the week. Each week, uh, our fans can send in questions, and this time it's for, via Instagram, uh, and it's two questions sort of the same from Koala Beer and Van der Welle. Both are kind of curious what it's like to be roommates with Tim, and if Tim is snoring. Um, I don't think Tim is snoring, but I I use earplugs, so I don't hear it, uh, and I don't don't lose them at night. So I have never heard him snore, but maybe he does, and I just never heard it. So uh, for now, he is a perfect uh, roommate. He's uh, he's really quiet, and he goes to bed re- really early. So uh, he uh, puts the light out at ten ten thirty. So that's that's perfect. All right, awesome. Uh, one more question. I let, I'm only letting you off. Who's going to win this Tour de France? Uh, good question. Um, I actually think that Nibali has a big chance of winning. Uh, Nibali was good at Giro. He made some mistakes by uh, marking uh, the wrong riders. Not really the wrong riders, but he was uh, really focused on one rider. And that's why they lost the GC, in my opinion. Uh, so I think he will be in a, and hopefully for him, he will be in a better shape here. And maybe because he said uh, before the race that he was only aiming for stage wins and mountain jerseys, that he uh, and maybe he gets some freedom because of this. And that's maybe how they he can uh, take a minute or two somewhere, and then he has a big chance to win the the, the tour. And also he has the uh, the experience of winning uh, Grand Tours. I think he won four Grand Tours, three or four Grand Tours. So uh, from all the riders here who have won Grand Tours, he has the most experience and he knows the feeling. So I, I'm going for Nibali. Okay, Nibali it is for you. Uh, I want to thank you, Thomas, for jumping on the Tux Turbo Talks podcast. And uh, yeah, good luck for the rest of the tour and obviously the rest of the season finishing those three Grand Tours. Yep, thank you. All right, that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the Talk Super Talks podcast. It's much appreciated and helps us to get the word out about this podcast. This was Rob Bau with Thomas de Gent from Lotto Sudal. Stay tuned for a new Talk Super Talks next week. Mm-hmm.